Coach Brown coached Wayne Sims, Wade's father, from 1988 through 1991 and uh, had great relationships with all of his players, and Wayne Sims was one of them. In fact, Coach Brown was there for the birth of Wade when, uh, when he came in back in uh, 1997. Here is uh, Coach Dale Brown joining us here this morning. Coach, I know you were over there at the Sims household uh, late last week in such a devastating scene. Jordy, I was absolutely numbed when I heard about it. The first day, I never got out of my pajamas. I got up early in the morning, <clears throat> was going to go work out, turned on the computer and found out about it. I couldn't really even respond that particular day. I waited till the next day. Johnny Jones came to pick me up. We went to Faye and Wayne Sims' house, mom and dad. And the old adage, I never quite understood this fully until now, this tragic death. Good can come from bad. Yeah, that's somebody's motivational talk. They got paid to make and make somebody feel good. When I went to the Sims' house, sitting by Faye on that, her, on their couch, she reached over and she said, Coach, I don't know. I'm just, I don't know how I can get over, but I know God will help us. I know, I know there was a reason. To see, and I'm not trying to be an evangelist here or some spiritual expert, but to see the presence of God, to see Wayne trying to understand it. Now, can you imagine what, I have no concept of what it would have been like. Then, Will Wade, in my opinion, never has to win a game at LSU, and he'll never he'll never have a greater victory. What he did, how he got involved, how he called people, how he called me, how he befriended the the family. Joe Oliva told me that in his 40 years, this is the most worst situation he's ever faced. Johnny told me one o'clock at night, Hiller Moore called Johnny Jones up in Houston, in Houston and told him of the thing. The law enforcement, how quick they got to it. The citizens of the town that gave information, which oftentimes they don't. To see Stanley Roberts in the home when I got there, he was Wade's godfather. Shaquille O'Neal had contacted him. Shaquille's mama just got a hold of me today. And I came down to, hey, what are we going to do? Is this Wade, is this, can this be the catalyst to lose this beautiful young man? I've known him since he was the day he was born. Can this be the catalyst to solve our epi epidemic, pro epidemic problems after we have? Oh, you know, we forget easily. If anybody's eaten at Louis, they got to remember the old dishwasher, Donald Smart, who had a sure. perpetual smile. Yes, he sir. gets murdered at the gates of LSU by a white supremacist. Ryan Francis, Glenn Oaks, comes home, USC star, gets That's killed right. on Acadian. Where does it end? Now, we have to be no, the four Ps are not going to solve it. A pill, prayer, police, or prison isn't going to solve it. <clears throat> we have to understand. We have to look back at the problems. And I know we've come millions of miles on race relations and et cetera, but Africans, Amer African, -Americans have, African Americans have suffered through 250 years of slavery, 90 years of Jim Crow, 60 years of separate but equal, 35 years of a racist housing policy, and until we recognize and admit this, America will never be whole. Now, for all of us to understand that both parties must admit their flaws, I know I have, I have African-American friends all over this country, tons of players. They're the ones that fear the violent, dysfunctional behavior that has made murder the number one cause of death for black males between the ages of 15 and 34. And sadly, 90% are killed by other black men. So what helps to perpetuate the problem in the African-American community? That's what we have to solve. Building another prison isn't going to do it. The law enforcement can't do it. 75% of all births are out of wedlock. 70% of these children are growing up with a single parent. Education is another major problem. Less than 50% of all black males graduate from high school, and 75% of crimes are committed by high school dropouts. <clears throat> Martin Luther King summed it up better than I ever could. He was a man with great strength and wit wisdom. Many profound statements he made, but I remember vividly one when he said, talking about the problems in our country, the greatest country in the world, and I've been in 90 of them, but a country that has to wake up. We can't be in a coma about the problem. He said, change can only happen through education, justice, and unity. And 
the no, no Emancipation Proclamation, no Civil Rights Bill can totally bring this kind of freedom. Man will only be free when he reaches down to the inner depths of his own being and begins to sign his own Emancipation Proclamation. One night years ago, I was watching television late at night, channel surfing. My wife goes out in the other room because I'm the world's greatest channel surfer. And Nelson Mandela was being interviewed, and he was in a prison. He was sitting on this steel bunk, and this journalist was in there with a camera. And he was reaching his arms out, and he said, Mr. Mandela. Now, at the time, I really wasn't aware of who Nelson Mandela was. Later on, I was able to attend the speech here in Baton Rouge. I read every book he did, everything. I followed him. But he, this guy said to him, you've been 27 years locked up unfairly. He said, 10 in this cell. I can touch both walls with my arms. Three steps, I'm at the end of the cell. How can any human being not go crazy in this situation? Nelson Mandela, with a benevolent smile, said there were two reasons I didn't go crazy. One, God never left my side. Now, hold on. God never left my side. If anybody should be bitter, he was. Number two, I had a commitment in the marrow of my bones that all of the black people of South Africa should be free. However, before you can ever be free, you must be educated, you must be disciplined, and we must be respectful to one another. Mm. Now, we can say, well, this is, this is just a black and white problem. No, it's not just a black and white problem in America. The problems stem back from 1607 to the present time. And the reason I'm bringing this up, I grew up in Indian country. I saw how they were treated. There were 370 treaties, Jordy, that were ratified between the Native American Indians and the U.S. government. We have a perfect record. We violated every one of them. Today on the reservations, one of my dear young friends is the head of North Dakota Indian Affairs. He sent me a message the other day about the alcohol, the drugs, the suicide, the rapes, the children with no fathers, inferior education. Cheat. Now, why? What can we do? Well, silence has always been evil's greatest ally. Everybody's afraid to speak up. Or we give this, we give this polity what's political correct. People have to have the courage to stand up for what they know is right, and then and only then will we have any kind of chance in finding a path to peace and happiness. And I just hope that two weeks from now, Jordy, this will all be forgotten. It can't be forgotten. Somehow we have to figure out the situation. Now, what can you and I do? It's very easy to say, that's the biggest excuse of all. A little, what can little old me do? Little old me can do a lot if we want to try. So it's complicated. It starts with, we've got to have a father image in home. Now, can we keep every home? I was abandoned two days before I know. I know the pain. Thank God I had a wonderful mother in a community, a good school I went to. We have to get kids educated. And it rolled off my tongue real easy. Now, is Baton Rouge going to stand up? Have we become the little Chicago in the United States? I love this town. I love Louisiana. But I despise the fact, the crime, uh, what the law enforcement officers have to go through every day, every day. The leadership, coaches, it's so divisive. I mean, when you just look at the the Metro Council here in the city, they Mm -hmm. can't even sit down in the same room and talk about the current problems without bringing up what, what side is right and what race. And, and it's just, it's, it's such a, a bad time and temperament for, for political leadership right now in the city. And I, I like you hope that that such a tragedy last week and losing one of our own that was so beloved can maybe spark some change and just sit people down at the table and start the conversation. Jordy, what you just said, how come everybody in the media isn't saying the same thing? That's exactly right. We've got to be able to speak up. Courage. Courage. Without courage, you can have no other standards. And so you say, well, why should I speak up? Who's, well, this is going to go on to happen to one of your own children, your own relatives, your own loved ones. Usually it's just a statistic and it's forgotten. Wade is different. Wade was known on the southern campus, the LSU campus. Mm-hmm. He's a wonderful young child. And to have this happen, I just hope that, again, this will just not be, well, we just forgot about it. And I'm going to give, I know, I know, 
What kind of a difference can you make? I will fight with every fiber in my body to try to bring about change. Is being political correct? Watching that Senate meeting the other day, yeah. it was like they were all trying out for the Jerry Springer it show. Was, it, it's embarrassing. It, Jerry it's Springer an, show. It's embarrassing. I've in, I communicate. With, I'm, I, I've been in 90 countries in the world, Jerry. I communicate with people all over the world. They love it. They're constantly saying, what's wrong? What's going on in the United mm-hmm. States? So we need to wise up. There was a book just written, How Democracies Die. And, oh, that's not going to happen to us. What do you mean it's not going to happen to us? It can happen to us unless we become the country that we need to be. We've made great improvement. I see things every day. I see the beauty of whites helping blacks, blacks helping whites. My mother, she only had an eighth grade education. Jordy, I remember as a 10-year-old child in the little one-room apartment we lived in, her sitting me down and telling me this. Dale, always remember. We're all of God's children and treat all of God's children properly. Dale Brown joining us here, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge, uh, 100.3 ESPN Radio down in New Orleans. Last one, Coach. We'll get you out of here on this one in your time. So much appreciated. Your voice so heavy and means so much to so many people at this time of struggle. Take me back to 1988. You buried one of your players, Don Redden, in season after Don had finished up his his uh, his eligibility with LSU two years before, and it almost been the face of that Final Four run for you guys. You had to turn around and get your team prepared to play against Vanderbilt, in which they were successful that day. The challenge that Will Wade has in face in front of him that he faces in coaching his team in the wake of such loss. Do you know what he's got, Jordy? And you got a great member. The reason that team was able to rise from that was the fact that Clenda. And Levy Redden, his Mm. beautiful parents in Monroe, called me and said they wanted to come to the game to support the team. I didn't have to talk to the team and get them fired up or give a rah-rah speech. To see them sit behind the bench, I never wanted to win a game. And this is not embellished an ounce. I never wanted to win any game as badly as I did that to give them momentarily some pleasure. Faye and Wade Wayne Sims are identical to those parents in the midst of heartache. I didn't see bitterness. I didn't see a cloud hovering over the house. I saw friendship and love and beauty. I left there. I wanted to go there to try to lift them. I came back home and I told my wife, I'm lifted. I kind of been in a fog. Some people would say I've been in a fog since I got here in 1972, (laughs) but I, I was in a fog. They stimulated me. So everything, it's so easy to be evangelistic. It's so easy to immediately come out and say something and then forget. I don't know how many years I have left on this earth, but I'm fighting harder than ever to try to bring about change. And we've just got to have a dialogue. We have to be open to one another. We have to show love to one another. And until we do, this is going to continue and continue and continue. It can't continue. So anybody that may be listening to this, I hope you're stimulated to do something, getting involved. And for any of you that think, what can little old me do? I want you to Google the name Telemachus, T-E-L-E-M-A-C-H-U-S. Google what little old Telemachus did to change the Roman Colosseum from the gladiators to eliminate it by coming and speaking up, and etc. Little old you can do a lot. It's a cop-out. Coach, you're the best. Always appreciate your voice. Thank you for thank, thank you, you so Jordy, much for giving me the opportunity, and thank you for speaking up. Yes, sir.